uh, full employment um, you know, trace that back to uh, actually a bill that was uh, uh, in the uh, uh, during Franklin Delano Roosevelt's term, um, and then uh, uh, then there was the uh, full employment bill in the seventies, Humphrey Hawkins, and. Uh, and then there was a full employment bill that Ron Dellums had introduced and that uh, was uh, uh, also reintroduced by Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Um, and um, actually all three bills were written by the same person. Um, but the, uh, uh, the, bill, the problem with the, uh, with the first two uh, and with the uh, one that was introduced, the full employment bill and uh, FDR's term, and uh, the Hunt and Hawkins bill, is that they, uh, they did not have teeth in the legislation. There was not really enforcement powers. Um, that although they were, they deemed that all of the U.S. federal policies should be geared towards full employment, uh, there wasn't any way to really enforce it. And what we've seen is that with the Federal Reserve, their monetary policy is actually a way of increasing unemployment. That uh, whenever the, uh, uh, whenever, um, uh, you know, that uh, when the market starts to uh, reach a, a very low level of unemployment, uh, they consider that that's going to, to then increase inflation and so then they restrict credit, which then uh, uh, results in layoffs and increases unemployment. So it's a, it's a, a cycle that's calculated there to protect uh, basically uh, the deposits that bankers have, uh, that they're not eroded by inflation. There's no effort to be cutting uh, profits as, a, you know, as an inflationary pressure, but uh, to actually put workers out of work so that uh, other workers will see people out on the streets and then be afraid to at demand raises or go out on strike, and, and that lowers wages. Um, the, um, uh, we are now you know, in, in, in approaching a, a level that uh, of uh, uh, you know very low unemployment. Um, although we all realize that that doesn't count that the people that are out on the tents on the sidewalks, right? It's only counting people who are, are registered maybe with EDD actively looking for employment. Um, so there's a, actually a much larger rate of unemployment. Uh, but as unemployment decreases, we're not seeing actually increases in wages. Productivity is increasing, but wages aren't increasing. So we need to look at then the other factors that are causing wages to stagnate. Um, and I think some of the major factors have been the decrease in the, in the uh, rate of unionization. Uh, lower number of uh, percentage of union workers. Um, the, uh, that uh, um, public sector employment has not rebounded since uh, the 2008 recession hit. And, uh, and I think in many ways, the public sector employment uh, would set the bar for the private sector. Uh, I think in the back of a lot of workers' minds is, boy, if I get a job with the city, I'll have it made. You know, they have a, they're, they're practically at a living wage. They have a Cadillac health plan. Uh, and they even have pensions, which is uh, pretty, uh, you know, getting pretty rare, you know, uh, benefit to find pensions getting really rare in the private sector. Um, the, uh, the, what we need on the federal level, and this was uh, introduced many years ago by Bernie Sanders, is a uh, strengthening of the National Labor Relations Act, but particularly uh, recognizing card check neutrality, that there's enforcement of card check neutrality. Uh, the, uh, as well as that we need to be protecting the public sector, uh, and particularly against the attacks against public sector and the attacks we've seen against the pensions for public sector workers. Um, we need to be protecting uh, uh, the U.S. Postal Service. The Republicans have, uh, have 
uh, engineered an attack on the U.S. Postal Service uh, to uh, try to dismantle the U.S. Postal Service, and you know, in the interests of their uh, uh, of their wealthy patrons uh, like the Federal Express, um, they uh, uh, and uh, uh, and also looking at other factors that have uh, are bringing down wages for all workers. Uh, the repressive immigration policies that we uh, need to fight against the, these, uh, uh, the, uh, the use of the deportation police and also particularly the enforcement of immigration law in the workplace. Um, we need to, to uh, reverse the, uh, uh, to, you know, we, we actually need more humane alternatives to incarceration, but uh, this, uh, the mass incarceration that we have in this country and where the uh, prison labor has been open to the uh, private industry to have goods and products made where the average wage is 25 cents an hour. Uh, the, uh, uh, and uh, the free trade policies that, have, uh, uh, that are being used to exploit, uh, put people out of work here in this country but to super exploit the labor of workers right across the border in Mexico. Um, and so we need to, we need to have uh, fair trade policies that uh, uh, protect the rights of workers, uh, protect the environment, and protect the right to organize. Um, the, uh, on, uh, also on uh, the uh, federal level, um, the, uh, the welfare reform law that was passed in 1996, which is being used now to prep, push uh, desperate parents out into a job market that they're not prepared for. Um, this, we need to replace that with genuine job training programs that have actual strategies toward a path towards living wage jobs and, um, uh, and look at the expansion of the public sector to, to bring those, uh, those workers into available entry level jobs. Um, the, uh, uh, this is also a, uh, something that the Living Wage Coalition is working on on a local level uh, to have uh, local legislation that, uh, uh, that really transforms the welfare to work programs into genuine job training programs and that uh, the city really have a, a, a policy and a strategy towards fast tracking participants in welfare to work programs into available entry level positions. Um, and a key part of that is that uh, to end the use of people in the welfare and work programs to do public sector employment, which has now eliminated a lot of public sector uh, jobs, uh, in civil service positions with the city and county, and that those positions should be made into civil service positions uh, and, uh, uh, and those jobs available to people as long-term employment in uh, welfare to work programs. Um, the, uh, the city is currently using uh, a welfare to work programs called the public uh, PST, Public Sector Trainee uh, Program. As, uh, uh, it's a six month program and that's been used to, uh, uh, to uh, fill, uh, displace uh, public sector employees uh, and uh, uh, eliminate permanent civil service positions. So I'm going to end it there.